In Acts 1711 we read, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So without further ado, let's look into God's Word, the Bible. Good morning. This is going to be devotional number 421, and today's date is March 19th, 2018. This week I thought we would look at the subject of spiritual drunkenness. God makes many references to drunkenness in the Bible. For example, we read in 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 through 8, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. In this series, we will learn that the spiritual wine and strong drink of false gospels are characterized by lies about God's salvation program and rebellion against God's law, the Bible. These erroneous doctrines cause people to become spiritually deceived, which is equivalent to spiritual drunkenness. This was the essence of the spiritual warfare for the souls of mankind that began in the Garden of Eden and continued until the Great Commission was completed on May 21, 2011. While God's magnificent salvation plan is the primary theme of the Bible, Satan's opposition to it is an important sub-theme throughout. Satan and his demonic hosts had been relentlessly but unsuccessfully seeking to thwart God's salvation plan for his elect by deceiving mankind about the true nature of God and the essentials of the gospel of Christ, sin, righteousness, and judgment, as we read in John 16, 8. Since God's word is spiritual, one must compare scripture with scripture or spiritual with spiritual to understand the spiritual message of any particular verse in the Bible. Salvation is the spiritual theme of the Bible and righteousness is the main issue. That is, God is absolutely righteous while man is totally unrighteous because of sin. We learn that man died spiritually in the Garden of Eden due in part to Satan's trickery. Since that time, man in his natural or unsaved condition is alienated from God and is in rebellion against him. However, God, by his sovereign love, mercy, and grace, saved some individuals, his elect, from death and destruction by giving them a right standing with himself forever through the atoning work of the Lord Jesus Christ who was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, as Revelation 13, 8 affirms. Additionally, God the Holy Spirit applied His Word to the hearts of His people during the day of salvation as part of the salvation process. God commands His people to study His Word diligently to learn the spiritual truths he has written therein, and to obey what they learn from their studies. Because the Bible is its own dictionary and commentary, 
all conclusions about a particular doctrine must harmonize with everything in the whole Bible, and only the Bible on that particular subject. We will strive to accomplish that objective in this study uh, of spiritual drunkenness by carefully comparing spiritual with spiritual. God wrote the Bible in two parts, the Old Testament written mostly in Hebrew and the New Testament written in Greek. The God of the Old Testament and God of the New Testament are the one same eternal God of the Bible as the following verses affirm. Isaiah 44, 6 says, Thus saith Jehovah, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, Jehovah of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. John 10, 30 states, I, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ and my Father, are one. And John 14, 9 through 10 teaches, Jesus saith, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Hebrews 13, 8 declares, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Revelation 1, 8 and 22, 13 proclaim, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. An important characteristic of God and His Word is that of absolute truth. Deuteronomy 32.4 asserts, He is the rock, His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth, and without iniquity, just and right is he. Psalm 100 verse 5 affirms, For Jehovah is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Psalm 119 160 declares, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. John 3.33 states, He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. John 14.16-17 6, teaches, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. John 14, 6 underscores, Jesus saith unto, the, unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And lastly, John 17, 17 proclaims, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth.